All right, let's check out the Bifaco instrument interface. This is a module made to get external signals into your system. So it uses a combo jack for either microphones or quarter inch instruments like synths, drum machines, electric guitar, or bass. And you'll notice it's got uh, a nice big gain knob and a uh, really clear VU meter, as well as a, a phantom power switch toggle. And that's a big reason why I was excited to get this module. Uh, because this means when I do my modular by nature videos, I won't need to bring an external preamp around so I can just uh, plug my shotgun mic right into my system and and I'm good to go. Uh, so below your input section, you have an envelope follower section. So an envelope follower is able to take the volume of a signal and output an envelope. So, you know, if you've used envelope generators, this is kind of like that in reverse. It's taking the signal level and outputting a voltage based on the, the volume of that signal. And so in the case of this guy, you have a positive and a negative envelope output, and then you have these two response sliders. So the closer they are to the bottom, the faster uh, the envelope will react to any incoming voltage. And then as you raise these, they act as a sort of slew limiter and uh, they become more sluggish as they respond to incoming voltage changes, in incoming volume changes. And that uh, you have separate controls for both the rising voltage and falling voltage, which is uh, handy for, for dialing things in even more. And then you have an overall envelope level control. And so this scales the amount of these two envelopes uh, between 0 to 10 volts if it's turned up all the way. Uh, or So that would be 0 to 10 volts out of the positive, 0 to negative uh, 10 volts out of the negative envelope output. Uh, a lot of modules out there only expect 5 volts at the maximum. So if that's the case, you might want to just leave that at 12 o'clock. You know, if you find that... Um, modules aren't responding to uh, higher envelope levels, then yeah, you'll want to turn that down. Below that, we have uh, this knob here, which acts as a threshold for the trigger and gate output. So it's also referred to as the trigger and gate extractor. And so you'll notice as I turn this down, we're going to see more activity at the trigger and gate output. So they don't need such a loud volume to fire these outputs. And as you turn it up, we'll see them happen less unless I'm really loud. Uh, yeah, that didn't even do it. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. So since I have a nice input module, I might as well run my voice through the shapeshifter vocoder. I mean, it would be silly not to really. And uh, while I'm at it, you know, I can use the envelope follower to modulate the shape of shapeshifter. And uh, we can control the rate using those knobs. Uh, if we wanted to, we could also turn on percussion mode, which deactivates the vocoder unless I trigger it there. And uh, we need to turn that down for it to work. Yeah, there we go. So now, uh, actually the gate output is probably more appropriate. We'll turn it on like that. And I think we need to turn that down. So now the vocoder is activated by my voice. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of fun. Uh, I think it was working better when it's just on all the time though. So I have a lot of random noisemakers lying around my studio, so I thought this would be a fun excuse to take them out and make some noise through the modular. So yeah, let's see what I can come up with. Okay, so for my first patch with this thing, I wanted to do something weird and fun. So I decided to use my Electro Lobotomy Sonic Forest, and uh, I've got a few things going on here. So I'm just going to play around with it. This thing is super weird, a lot of fun, but it's really dynamic, so it's challenging to record. Really fun with 
a bow. And so here's what I came up with. To demonstrate the dynamics of the envelope follower section here, I'm going to use the chaos later to generate a basic drum groove, and then we can play around with the envelope follower response using the filter cutoff of Morgasmatron. So let's just get a little drum groove going here. All right, so I got a basic little drum groove going from the chaos later. So we'll bring the cutoff down. level here and control the level of that envelope on the filter cutoff. So we can slow the rise of the envelope. Let's hear what that sounds like now if we use that to control an oscillator.
Okay, so now I have my main microphone going through the instrument interface, and uh, I've got that running through Morgasmatron, then to Rainmaker and the FX Aid. Uh, right now, we're just hearing the dry output. Um, so, a while back, I bought one of these jaw harps, and I've had a lot of fun playing around with it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing with it, but uh, I, I can get some pretty cool sounds out of it. Um, so I thought it would be fun to run this thing through the modular. Uh, so let's see what I can come up with. Here's what it sounds like dry. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, trigger output. So you can use the uh, this kind of threshold knob to determine when the triggering occurs, how, how loud it has to be for the triggering to occur. And I'm using that to trigger the sample and hold on ultra random analog, which is then uh, changing the filter cutoff on Morgasmatron. Uh, so we can turn up uh, that output. So now this is um, the Morgasmatron with filter modulation from the sample and hold triggered by the instrument interface. And what's also happening is the, uh, let's bring up the dry signal again. What also is happening is the positive envelope output is controlling the level and rate of channel one on Quadrax, and that's modulating the crossfade on Morgasmatron. So it's um, oscillating between uh, the two filters with uh, sample and hold cutoff modulation. So there's the filter cutoff output. And then um, I've also got some, uh, some other modulation coming from the envelope output going to modulate Rainmaker. Uh, so yeah, let's play around with this a bit. So I'll uh, start with just the filter cutoff version. <laughs> a few times. <laughs> well, after I thought I had recorded all my footage, I watched uh, this talk that Sarah Bell Reed gave on her MIGSI system and uh, setting up systems that uh, respond to her trumpet playing. And she had this really interesting concept of creating a, a system that responds like another musician. So it's it's almost like you're playing a a trumpet and modular duet, and uh, that really excited me, so I wanted to give it a shot. 
the big takeaway for me in the patches that I made was using uh, the the loudest notes to uh, to send gates and triggers to randomize things. So in my case, I used um, the gates and triggers to randomize both uh, the settings of Shapeshifter and Rainmaker, and also the voltage bank on Tetrapad. And Tetrapad was controlling the rate of my uh, function generators, so quadrax and maths. And so whenever I hit a loud note, it would create these different um, different effects and different textures and different rhythms. And it was a lot of fun. It was really, really fun to, to explore and experiment with. And uh, yeah, it was a lot more interesting than just setting up uh, an effects unit. She, li she likes to call it a two-headed dragon, which uh, I thought was pretty cool. So the first patch uses my hank drum and the second patch uses my trumpet and I added Nebula into the mix with that one too. So I had a lot of fun experimenting with the various ways I could use it. You can get the module as a DIY kit or you can buy it fully assembled. And uh, yeah, wherever you are, I hope you're healthy and safe and thanks for watching. <laughs>